Hi, Leaf with MindExpanse.com again. I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to navigate around in the Microsoft Access program. That's a database system um, that's been widely used over the years in many businesses for a variety of purposes. Um, however, I'm going to focus more on how do we actually navigate and how do we set up some basic things like a table and a query and so forth. Um, so first thing is I already opened the program and I have a Windows 8 machine so if I was to you know click on my Windows button it would actually take me into that screen uh, so I could actually select it out of it but if you're on another one you'll just hit the start button that was down here in the lower left hand corner on all the other previous versions. Uh, by default it wants to save this as database one it might be database two depending upon what you're doing if the program's still open but you'll notice that the path right here is my name and then lead you know for documents and it wants to save it in your my documents folder uh, but I want to save it to my desktop so I'm going to click on the folder option there and I'm going to say desktop and then I'm just going to rename this as my database for the purposes of this tutorial okay and I'm going to say okay and then I have to say create notice the extension is an ACCDB that's an access database um, and it, that's what you're going to be looking for um, by default this is what it looks like when you first open the program and first start however I don't like to work in this uh, I think it's a little bit more clumsy um, to actually navigate in so the first thing I typically do is I go over here and I can drop down this menu you can see I have a data shape view data sheet view sorry that I'm actually in and I have a design view I like to do design view and it will prompt me to save this so I'm just going to save this as uh, you know client names and however you put this in is up to you if you want to leave it all together if you want to put a space in okay it really doesn't matter um, it's just how you have it it's a preference of yours then I'm going to say okay and you'll notice that on the left hand side over here now it says client name and that's going to be the first table um, by default we end up with field name of ID and a data type of auto number well the auto number just simply means that it's going to keep counting one two three four and so forth um, as we keep adding records in at this point. And then we have the primary key, which is in a more advanced topic when we're talking about relationships, but this helps us link those together so they can actually communicate with multiple tables. And we're not going to really focus on that right now. Um, so we have this ID, and we can change that name if we don't want to be ID. We could put in a client number, client ID, whatever. We could leave that as an auto number, and this is going to keep on generating a number. However, uh, we're just going to do something real simple. Let's say we're doing a a, a quick database system uh, for clients somewhere um, and so we can put in the very first field that's underneath that we can simply type in client number now sometimes you can use symbols and sometimes you can't okay if it's reserved it will pop up and tell you you can't uh, but this is what you're going to see for your heading okay when you actually go to enter data and since I have client number here I can leave that as a text I really don't have to do it as a number um, because it'll search that way and then I'm gonna put in capital F and then name and then I'm gonna just click on that it's gonna be text I'm gonna put in last so I'm gonna put L and name and then I'm gonna come over here and just click and it automatically fills it in with text however if I wanted to I could drop the sub menu down and I have other fields in here that I could actually uh, work with so we're just gonna go ahead and put in some generalized stuff like address okay we're gonna leave that as text we're gonna put in suite in case there's a suite number or apartment so suite forward slash apartment and then I'm just gonna click underneath it'll automatically fill that in and I can also use my arrow keys um, so next thing we need is we need the city or town so we'll just put in city and then I'm just gonna arrow down so you can see it auto fills and then we're gonna put in our zip code and I'm going to leave that as text. We can do it as a number, but there's really no need to because we're going to type that in if we ever do an advanced query search so we can actually find an item by zip code. So it just works better. And then the next thing we want to put in here is like a phone number. Okay, and again, I can use the hash key for that if I want. And is there anything else we're going to need in here? Well, for our purposes, really not. Uh, we're just creating a table so you can kind of see how that navigates around. Um, you know we could put in their doctor's name and so forth if it was a medical office we could put in there you know products um, one thing that's really nice to put in here is an attachment so I can put in you know uh, 
pictures. Let's just do this, pictures. And then, or let's rename that. Let's actually use photo, okay? ID is what we're gonna use that for. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna change this to attachments, okay? And if I change this to an attachment, what will happen is I can actually upload a file into the database and save it. So I can actually save a photo that way. And that's kind of neat to do, okay? So I'm gonna leave that and then I'm gonna save my file. Okay, you just click on the Save button, and if I click the X and I haven't saved it, it will prompt me to save it. Um, and so, let's say that's great, I'm, you know, there, let's say I wanted to make it a second one, I could go to Create, and the tables here, I have Table Design, and I have SharePoint. Um, I'm going to go to just the Table Design, puts you back into this field, okay, and then I'm going to put in here some name. You'll notice that when I do that, I don't get anything as far as the auto number stuff, so... I could actually type in what I want here and, and actually modify this. So if I put in, you know, ID again and I put in auto number, I'm just typing the letter A to get auto number, okay? It looks real similar to the other one except for this field right here is actually not a primary key, which again we'll talk about in another video. But I can simply right mouse click on that and say primary key and you'll notice that a little key pops up there. And then I could go in and fill my information in and so forth. Okay. Now, if I click this X, you'll notice I get a warning. Do I want to save the changes? Yes, I want to save them, and I'm going to give it another name. And I'm just going to put down there name, you know, two for our purposes. Okay, and okay. So we've made two tables, and we have to put some data in. And you can put the data in by simply double-clicking it and typing across. Okay, you'll see the little attachment field here. Or you can just simply make sure this is highlighted, that it's closed and then we can actually do something as far as a form. So I can do a form wizard, which is a little icon up here, and it allows me to add the fields I want. So if I have multiple tables, I can add more than one together, but they have to be communicating with each other. So I'm just gonna do ID, client, and so forth. So since that's all I, I want all those, I'm just gonna hit the double uh, greater than sign, and that's gonna copy all the fields over for me. And then I'm going to say next, and I have choices. I can do a column, I can do tabular, I can do a data sheet, I can do a justified. Um, it really depends on how you want it. You can experiment with these, but if I just take the first one, um, I'm going to leave it as the same name, and I'm going to say open it so I can enter information, finish. And you'll notice that it pulls this information in and does some real weird stuff. Okay, you'll notice that I've got photos and different things going on in here. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that one more time. Client name, form wizard, and we want to make sure that we have all these items actually in it. So we can just do them single. Okay, what we don't need is the file file data and stuff like that. So we'll stop at the photo and we'll say next and then we'll leave it that way but I'm going to actually do justify this time so you can see the difference and then say next and then we'll call it client name one we'll take that as default for our purposes um, I can modify it which means if I go in I can actually change it and change colors up and so forth but you can always do that later and I'm going to say finish and you're going to see now that we have this list it's actually going down um, and, and I would just simply come in here and, and type however maybe I don't like the way this looks I can go into my layout design and I can actually play around with some of this stuff and actually change the way it looks okay width wise so I could change this so I don't have as big a fields here okay so if I don't need something that's really long um, I could do that and I can multi select so I can actually click hit shift and hit hit that line again real carefully and then I can adjust more than one at a time so if I know I wanted to do the names and I wanted them to be the same length, I could just simply click, make sure that the yellow is on the outline of it, um, and I could just adjust those all at the same time, okay? Because we know we're not going to need a really long name. And then I could do the same thing for the rest of these um, if I wanted to. Of course, we know a zip code is not going to need to have this extremely long area. So we can shorten that down. 
and I can change this stuff you know by going in uh, a little differently um, but that's that's fine like right now these are mighty big okay so I could simply just adjust this stuff and reposition it on the page real carefully okay so we have to you know play around with it a little bit because sometimes it doesn't like to, to always work as well as we think it should um, you can use the arrow keys to try to line things up a little more um, and right now this photo is fairly small um, and I could expand that window out some if I wanted um, it'll take a little bit but it's trying to fit everything to the screen okay and then I could just say okay let's go back to form view which is really right here and then I could just simply start typing in information in here and again I could change all these fields you'll notice that sometimes the wizard doesn't always do things the way we want it to so we may have to go in and modify that um, and the column format tends to work pretty well okay and if I click the X it's gonna say save once I enter data in it and I go to next record though it automatically saves I want it to keep doing that okay so um, this was a really quick video so far to show you how to make a table but let's say I want to do a query and now what is a query a query is just a way to search for a term so let's say I want to look for somebody by phone number then I can actually type in their phone number or similarly when you actually they actually ask you for the last four digits of your social security number uh, you can actually say you know it's one two three four and they could type that in they could pull you up by that into the database system um, so it's really uh, an easy way to do it now I like to click on the item of the table I'm gonna create the query for and then I'm gonna go over here to my query wizard and I'm gonna say I just want a simple one I don't need anything too advanced and what do I want to include I want to include my ID my client number my file name you know last name all that stuff okay so I can actually literally come down here and you know just select those one at a time if I do the other ones I can go back and take it off so let's just take the the uh, actual ID client number first name last name address so forth like we did before okay and then we're gonna say next and then we're just gonna call it client name query um, but we can actually say client number query um, and then we can actually say finish and what it will do is it will pop this up now there's something we can do as far as a, what we call a parameter query um, which is an advanced technique but if I wanted to only pull up certain information on people like we we're going to do a mailing list and I just needed their name and their address and I could just put those fields in rather than actually pull everything in okay if I was just going to do a search to find somebody's phone number and their first names I can make a query for instance let's go ahead and save this well, let's say I wanted to do another query for this but this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna only pull in the values that I want so I want their first name and their last name and I want a phone number and I can put them in any order I want okay usually the order we select them is the order it goes in um, and we don't really need anything else if we had a patient info in there or something like doctor we could do that and then I can say next and then finish and what it would do is when I actually pull this up it will actually show me just those items and you'll notice the views here we have some different ones we have design view which is totally different from the data sheet view okay so a query really its purpose is just to pull in information uh, that you only need rather than having to go through the whole file and search um, I can also look for things like uh, by certain names so if I want to type in you know the last name was Brown I could type in Brown um, and for it and actually do a search for it as I'm going through the process and that's again we got to set that up to do that but I'm just trying to just give you an overview of how this would actually function and then the last thing that we really have going on in here is something called a report uh, wizard and you know we did a form um, you can create other forms there's a lot of other ways you can do it um, but we can do what we call a re report and I'm just going to do a report wizard again the wizards are the easiest for people first starting um, again if I had multiple tables I could drop it down and select it you'll see the queries now 
are actually there. So if I have a special query that's searching for information by, you know, phone numbers and so forth or zip codes and I want to actually pull it up, then I can actually tie that together. Um, but you have to be kind of careful. So let's say I wanted just to do a report of a client name, first name, last name, and their address info and the phone. I don't need the photo. Then I could say next. And then I'm going to get this information, okay, and I can just move things around priority wise and so forth. Uh, we'll take the default. I'm going to say next. I could sort by how I want it to be, uh, but again, we're going to take the default. And then we have the tabular versus the column versus the justified. And I'm going to do a column and adjust to fill white so they fit on the page. Um, I'm going to say next. And I could also change it to portrait if I want to go across wider. Um, but we're going to say next, and we're going to leave that as that, and we'll just say report. And then we'll say, yeah, we want to re -pre uh, preview it. So let's say finish. And you'll notice that if I had information in here, it would list all this information for me. And if I had multiple records, it would actually put them below this. It would keep continuing on down here. Now, I haven't inputted any data in here or anything um, yet. Uh, but you know, if I had data in there, it would just multiple list all this information out for me. So I could actually print out a sheet as a report with just this information that we could give to somebody to follow up with. Okay, so um, this is again really a quick overview of how to get into the program and navigate with most of the stuff that you're going to use. However, it's not everything. Um, as you'll see, there's a couple more tabs. There's not as many tabs in here as other ones. But we can actually import things from Excel, Access, and some text files and so forth. Now they have to be formatted a certain way. Um, there's a few things that are you know tricky when you do that sometimes. Um, but we're able to actually import other data. So if you have a list of Excel, for instance, with all that information already in it, why re-enter it if we actually have set it up correctly with the headings already on there the way we want to be named, we can actually import that right into this program and not have to be bothered with retyping the information. It will automatically populate it for us as a table. Um, and then I'll, that'll be another video. I'll show you that. Okay, so that was a real quick overview just to get you exposed to uh, access. It wasn't to really teach you how to do anything, but um, it, other than set up some basic tables and run some basic queries and some reports, okay? Um, in another video, I'll actually show you some more detail as far as how that's uh, developed. Anyway, I hope this helps, and this is Leith from MindExpanse.com signing off. Until next time.